Welcome to the Soul Driven Podcast. I believe that when we invest in ourselves, the world benefits. If you are searching for meaning and purpose, if you are unsure about how to combine the spiritual with the everyday, if you are ready to uncover who you truly are, then you've come to the right place. The Soul Driven Podcast is dedicated to exploring the intersection of living a soulful and spiritual life in a driven and ambitious world. Join me for practical guidance, truthful discussions, and interviews with people who are successfully living a soul-driven life. My name is Anna Hendricks, spiritual guide, marketer, and your host. Thank you for being here. What's up, folks? Welcome back. Welcome back. So I've done it again. I've gone off the rails. (laughs) I took a well laid out plan and just kind of booted it right out the door because that's just kind of what I'm feeling these days, you know? I think the thing is with this podcast that it's been on such a consistent format really since pretty much the beginning or like probably around episode 10 and I'm just, I'm bored, I'm bored. I have uh, already created the new sort of episode format for the podcast for 2022 and I'm so excited to get it going because it's going to be a little bit of difference every week. And I'm really looking forward to just throwing in some diversity here. So it's not like this episode, then this episode, then this episode. Like, I want this to be fun. And if it's not fun, then it's time to go home, right? But I wasn't expecting to kind of start throwing out my schedule (laughs) this early. Who knows what's happening? I'm taking this week by week, okay? All right. (laughs) Um... First, we are in the midst of the lunar eclipse portal. For those who aren't familiar, this is a very potent, powerful time. And it lasts until right around December 4th when the next eclipse happens on the new moon. So these next two weeks, and that energy will hang out for a bit longer as well, I should say. But these next two weeks are, well they're going to be a little bit different for everyone, right? They might be intense for some, they might be exhausting for others. Suffice it to say, I think some things are going to come through in these next two weeks that are going to really grab you. It's a massive time of shifting and changing and just kind of taking out the old, putting in the new, and maybe that's what's happening with this podcast right now in regards to like, the format, the schedule of my show, but nah, I just want to have fun and I want to bring you value and I want to, I want to make you being here worth your time. So thank you for being here. (laughs) Um, I'm so excited to dive into today's gift, but I have an awesome announcement. So if you've been listening, you've heard me talking about my Accessing the Akashic Records workshop, which I've been teaching here in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I live. If that's something you would like to attend in December, that is on the 17th, you can contact me or you can look up Prana Salt Cave and purchase your ticket there. But I decided that I also wanted to host one of these online, which I did earlier this year, late last year, to a private group of uh, healers. It was phenomenal. It was actually kind of the, the very first time I put together this workshop and I've expanded on it. I've taught it multiple times and I just, I love it. You know, I love bringing the Akashic Records to you on this podcast But I also want to empower you to utilize the records for your own benefit in your life, if that is something that you're interested in. So I'm going to be teaching an online Accessing the Records workshop. It will be on December 13th, which is a Monday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. I will be keeping this class very small because this is an engaging workshop and everybody needs their time to talk and share and so if this is something you're interested in, make sure you check out the link in the show notes and get your ticket as soon as possible 
Um, so what we're going to be doing in the workshop is I typically open it, channeling through a message for the group, which I record and send out to everyone later. Then we dive into kind of the workshop component where I teach about the Akashic Records, like what the records really are. We go over guidelines, we talk about history, we talk about ways to experience the records and how to interact with the records, a bunch of different things. And then my favorite part of the workshop, I take you all into your own records. So everyone gets to experience their own records and then come back and share with the group and there's a bit more teaching. So it's about a two, two and a half hour workshop. And you know, it's, it is just an intro to the, to the records because the records are ever expansive, but you will be able to walk away from this workshop knowing how to access your records for yourself and have enough to go ahead and get going and trying and figuring things out. My previous students have not only loved the workshop, but like they've become readers of their own right. And so I'm empowering you. Um, again, if that is something you're interested in, make sure you check out the link in the show notes. Okay, so let's dive in to today. Today's topic is a gift. I wanted to, well, let me back up a little bit. I created this resource for my newsletter community. I've been talking a lot about, you know, having a spiritual toolkit over the last couple of episodes, the importance of it, but I haven't really dived into like, fully explaining what a toolkit is and or giving you an idea of how to fill your own. And I was really thinking through, you know, like Thanksgiving's coming. I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is like my favorite holiday. And I know that Thanksgiving, you know, especially in these times, we're very socially conscious and Thanksgiving was not created in a good fashion. The roots of Thanksgiving, I have a lot of issue with, but the thought, the essence of Thanksgiving, I want to always keep because I think it's a beautiful holiday. It was always very simple to me growing up. I wasn't celebrating the pilgrims and the Indians. I was celebrating just being with my family. I loved how simple the day was. You know, there was no expectation for presents. People weren't running around furiously leading up to it. You know, it was like, everyone just came together and made food and spent time and then like watched football. And I don't like football, but there's something about football and Thanksgiving, <laughs> you know, and everyone would like snuggle up on couches. And it was just, it was like, it's a time of together. You know, we'd, we'd share what we're thankful about around the table. And I am such a big proponent of gratitude and its power in our life. And I was just really thinking, you know, I wanted to create something for my email newsletter community because that community, you know, I, I get to interact with and I'm really putting a lot of like putting a lot of time into it these days. And um, so if you aren't a part of my newsletter community, make sure to sign up um, because I originally created this for them. I wanted to not only expand on what a spiritual toolkit is, but provide the resources like provide a massive list of resources and different ideas because we're all different, right? And I shared that with my, uh, with my community last week and the response was incredible. I'm, I'm so grateful that I took the time. <laughs> what started out as like a small list turned into a gargantuan beast, which that's just kind of how I roll. When I was in college, I would get in trouble because my papers would be too long. <laughs> my Professors were always like, Anna, keep it, keep it short, okay? Just keep it short. They knew like by telling me to keep it short meant that I would like keep it to like, you know, what other students might consider long. <laughs> but that's just me, you know, like when I start diving into something, I dive in pretty hard. So anyway, um, I created this list and I shared it out and they loved it. And then it was like, I have to share this with more people. I had already intended on posting it as a blog on my website and of course sharing it with my Medium community, but I was just like, no, I need to share this with the podcast community because I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for the time that you share with me. 
And whether you're a new listener or you've been hanging out with me from the beginning, like you mean everything to me. I really am thankful for you. And I want to empower you with this list as well. Because what's really cool about this list is there's something for everyone. So let me kind of dive in here just a little bit in regards to what a spiritual toolkit is. Well, I guess I should say like, why do you need a spiritual toolkit first? <laughs> um, you know, when, when the whole idea of a spiritual toolkit came to me, it was several episodes ago where I talked about, you know, like this is the time to fortify your spiritual practice. And a practice is comprised of things that come out of your spiritual toolkit. And these are names that I have adopted, okay? Um, and I went back and forth between toolbox, toolkit, toolbox, toolkit. But inevitably, I went with toolkit because A, it's an active word, and B, it felt like, yeah, we're just, we're gonna fill our kit with like whatever it is that we want, right? Um, and it's gonna change and it's gonna grow and evolve and all of those things. But we're headed into tough times, right? We are not necessarily, it's not easy out there right now. There's nothing but uncertainty in front of us. I mean, there's a lot going in, on in our governments across the world, um, our economy, inflation, like there's a lot of serious shit going on out there. And what has always been so important to me in regards to not only talking about spirituality, but has been making it practical. You know, I'm, I'm equal parts practical and spiritual. <laughs> like, I love learning spiritual stuff, but if I can't apply it to my life, then it's useless to me. You know, it can be flowery and beautiful and I'll enjoy it, but then I'll move on, right? If it's practical, then it's something I can actually implement and utilize in my life. And that is what I want. And that is what I want to share with you. So a spiritual toolkit is comprised of items or a list of items that are used daily to connect with your spirituality or when life gets tough. So some of these items um, that I shared in this resource list are things that I do every day because I have to, <laughs> because the world needs me to, so I can be nice and I can be kind and I can, you know, step into my host. Um, but then also there are other tools that I pull in when things are really tough that maybe I don't use daily, but that are kind of like my emergency go-tos. So, and that's the same for you. This is how you're going to be utilizing this information. Um, so in regards to the items that are in there, what I want to share with you are a few like guidelines for that. And one is, this is 100% about you. So anything that you decide to choose and put in your spiritual toolkit is because you want it there. It resonates with you. It brings you joy. And if you know it brings you joy and you love doing it, then you know you're choosing the right thing. Don't choose things because they're trendy or cool or someone else is doing them. This is 100% about you. And it's not going to be effective for you if you're doing it for anyone else. Um, Two, these things are always going to grow and change. You know, uh, <laughs> the the things that are in my spiritual toolkit, like they'll be the same for a long time. And then all of a sudden I'll just change it all up. Um, or I'll like pull in something else or throw in something else. But I know that when the energy shifts with something, it's time to move it out. And it's time to bring something else in because I'm changing, right? Like we change and evolve constantly. Like we literally have almost an entirely new inner body, like every seven years, I think it is. Like we're constantly growing and evolving physically. So the things that we're doing should also be changing, growing and evolving. Plus it's fun to try some new stuff out, right? It's fun to like switch it up. Um, and finally, just kind of a, you know, the thing is that the toolkit, what it really does is that it brings you back to yourself. These are items that bring you back to yourself. They connect you with the wisdom that's inside of you. They bring you joy. They might help you go through really difficult emotional times. They might also bring out really intense emotions from you. 
they hopefully will make you laugh. <laughs> if you don't have anything in your toolkit that makes you laugh, you're in trouble. That's all I gotta say. Um, but the bottom line is they bring you to your highest and best self and they help you ground into who you are. So um, what's really fun about this list too is like after I sent it out to my newsletter community, I started creating another list because I was like, oh man, but then there's this and then there's this. and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, But what's really cool about these resources and using them and taking the time to create a spiritual toolkit, which I'm, I'm probably going to do a workshop for as well because I think that would just be fun. But they are resources that are to be used in times when, uh, well, they will help you build your spiritual practice. They will help you to learn to trust in yourself and you'll gain so much confidence in your intuitive abilities while utilizing them. I just realized that my dishwasher is going and I hadn't shut the door, so sorry about that. Um, but this, this toolbox and, and putting the time into creating this toolbox is huge. But I know there's so much different stuff out there and that was really why I wanted to bring together this resource list to share with you because it can just get overwhelming. We've already got life to take care of and then a spiritual practice, what? But the main reason that I pulled together these resources is because I want to encourage you to to build and develop your own personal relationship with spirituality. This is like at the core of my mission, at the core of who I am. And while I would love to say I develop a relationship with God, um, it doesn't have to be one entity or one thing. It's, you know, spirituality is so different for all of us. And it's not my place to judge what works for you. It's my mission to provide you a lot of different things to pick and choose from. That's what this podcast is all about. You know, like I bring on a bunch of different people, different practitioners who are doing different things, who come from different walks of life because I want to inspire you. And hopefully, you know, you choose one or two or however many that really resonate with you and you dive in and you check it out and maybe you start working with it. All I care about is that you start developing a personal relationship with spirituality because a life without spirituality is empty. A person who lives without spirituality are the majority of people in this world. They're walking around trying to feed themselves on material things that are never going to satiate the thirst that they have inside of them because spirituality is so much deeper than a big yacht or a bunch of hot ladies or a million billion dollars in the bank. Not that we might not really love some of those things, right? No shame. But they're never going to satiate us. Spirituality is the only answer. And so that's my background impetus to this. Now, before I dive into some of these things, I just want to share with you that the blog I created will be posted in the show notes, you'll be able to access that. And I am not going to go over all these details, not even by any stretch of the imagination, because there is a lot. I don't even know how many like resources and links I provide, but it is a full packed list. And again, that is really to help you kind of dive in and maybe check out some things that you might, might not like, right? So let's go ahead and go through a few of these. <laughs> I really needed some water. Okay, so first of all, tapping. Tapping is something I love. It's called emotional tech, emotional freedom technique. <laughs> and, you know, because I am a physical person, I like moving, I like doing things, I really enjoy tapping. And it's been incredible for helping me to learn how to like release limiting beliefs, to lighten my mood and to heal different parts of myself. Um, we have some great resources from like Lindley Welty, who was a guest on this podcast. She actually created a tapping video for anxiety just for um, my email list, so which you'll have access to. But um, in addition, another one of the things that I've really been working through <laughs> that I realized 
much earlier this year. No, it was last year. Yeah, it was last. Wait, I get my days. I, I get my times mixed up. If you, if you know me and you're like, Anna, what day, blah, blah, blah. I'll probably get it wrong. So all I'm going to say is earlier this year, because I think that's enough time. I realize I have some major money hangups. Like I have some limiting beliefs around money that come from my family, you know, and, and no, no shame for my family. Our parents always do the best they can, but I have some major, major hangups. And I, it's so funny because as an adult, right, I'm getting ready to turn 40. And I th thought that, um, well, actually I'll be 40 by the time you listen to this. <laughs> but um, I thought, actually, no, you won't. I won't. I won't be 40. No. Okay. Thank you. Whew. 27th. 27th. I thought I had overcome these things. I really thought that I was doing pretty good. And, you know, I, 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 could like see what some of these issues were, but I didn't realize how deeply rooted they had gotten into me. You know, conditioning is a really fascinating thing because like you can watch it, you can see it happening and you won't realize what it's doing to you until a ways down the road. Um, so anyway, I have started tapping on money issues um, with a gentleman by the name of Brad Yates. And I've kind of put myself into like a self-imposed like 30-day like money tapping like challenge for myself. And it's been wild to just kind of start seeing things like changing and unraveling, um, relaxing. So, you know, tapping is, is an amazing, amazing tool for a number of different things. Um, but I provided those. Astrology, you know, I love astrology. I talk about astrology all the time. And... I think astrology is such an incredible tool because it helps us to understand what is going on and what is coming and so that we can make different choices ahead of time. Astrology for me is empowering. Some people really get freaked out by it, but that is not me. I use it as an empowerment tool and I've loved astrology since I was a young kid. It always helped me to understand like people around me and me. Like I, when I was a kid and growing up and still to this day, I love things that help me to understand myself better. And, and cause it's just, you know, it's like one of the reasons why I love the Akashic records. When we can understand why we do the things we do, then we can stop like hating on ourselves and being like, oh, you're a terrible person. And be like, oh, huh. well, this stems from this little traumatic event and blah, 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 you know? And we're able to find so much love and compassion for ourselves and the people in our lives. I love looking at relationship astrology, you know, because it's so fascinating to see like how things are working together and what issues um, arise and why. <laughs> Again, an empowerment way of looking at things because then we can do something about it, right? If you're just hanging out in the dark and you're just dealing with life as it comes at you, okay. But I personally prefer getting some clues and hints to what's going on. It doesn't have to be so difficult. So I provided several different um, astrologers that I love that are great resources for us in these times. Um, numerology is another one. For, you know I love numerology. I would imagine you know I love numerology. And numerology is also something I've had books about since I was young. I'm really into like making sure, like looking up house numbers and um, even when I'm like scheduling things, <laughs> like like the workshop. I actually changed the date of the online workshop because so I was like, mm, no, I don't like that energy of that number. We're going to choose this one instead. Um, these are things that I think about because they're important because it's energy and energy is something that we can ignore if we want to, but it's everything. So I also provide resources for numerology. Um, meditation, of course, is a big one. What's cool about the meditation resources is I included not only a type of meditation that I really love, but I included um, a way for people, uh, a resource for people who really struggle with meditation or are brand new and kind of want to jump in. But this resource is also something that I started using um, about two years into my meditation practice and I learned some really cool techniques that I'm still using today. Um, so 
in addition, I like call out my meditation OG, which is Miss Tara Brock. She's amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, when I left Christianity, she kind of replaced the teachings because I, I love a good sermon. I'm, I'm about it. I'm really about it. I've talked about Joyce Myers on this podcast multiple times. And, you know, if Joyce and I ever sat down for coffee, we'd probably disagree on like so much. <laughs> but what's amazing about Joyce Meyer is she's solely focused on helping people mature their relationship with God, which is like very in line with my mission. And so she stays out of all the messy stuff. Um, she's super direct. She's sassy. She's my kind of lady, you know. Um, but Tara really kind of replaced that for me. And then she shares uh, multiple meditations every week for free. She's incredible. Um, and then I share a meditation practice that I that is life changing. And it's something that I did for the first part of 2021. I'm also going to be doing it for the first part of 2022. If it's something that resonates with you, make sure to hit me up because we can keep each other accountable. Um, so chakra balancing is another one. Chakra balancing is huge. I think it's, you know, it's, it's not something that we talk about enough. Because everything is energy, Cleaning out the seven systems of energy in our body is just crucial to being able to kind of stay balanced and even. And it's something that I do like one to two times a week, just kind of depending upon the week and also my time. But um, it's very important. Like I am always aiming to be a clear channel for my clients and chakra balancing is everything for that. But I don't think that we fully understand in this day and age how important chakra balancing is, like clearing the stuff out. Back in the day, like this is how health was restored. And this is massive for keeping our personal health in line, not only mentally, energetically, emotionally, physically, it's huge. So I include a couple of resources for that. Breathwork, it's my new favorite tool. I'm obsessed, 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 obsessed. Uh, I just completed the closer eight week women's group that was run by Jen Mansell, who I interviewed on this podcast. And oh, I'm in love, I'm in love with breath work, <laughs> which is so funny because I was like terrified of it for the longest time. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that I probably like suffocated in a past life or something because I am a very claustrophobic person and I also had asthma as a kid and so like breathing for me is I don't know like breath work always scared me because it made me feel like I wasn't gonna be able to breathe which maybe sounds a little silly but true anyway it has been amazing what has been happening in my life since the breath work my daily breath work practice has started and it's only been a couple of months and I can't wait to see where it's going to be in a couple of years. Um, it's crazy. It's like blown open my clairsentience and my Akashic readings have just like stepped up to this whole different level. It's kind of been discombobulating a little bit, but like I'm loving it. <laughs> so I provide a couple of resources there. Um, music. Music's huge. Huge, huge, huge. I don't think we understand how important music is and what it is that we digest, what it is that we're listening to. Even something that's just kind of playing on the radio is absorbed by us. So it's really important to be aware of what it is that you listen to, be aware of what you're digesting. But music, you know, it can shift a mood. It can like, it can just change things so quickly. It can help you get stuff done. Um, so the music that I shared specifically on this is really dedicated towards helping you to calm down to ground, but also to like get energized, motivated, inspired. Um, I've got some amazing what I call brain food music resources on here. Um, in addition to like some sound healing and you know some some lighter, softer things. Um, one of the resources is really cool. Um, it's a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Jason Lewis, Mind Amend. And I found him at this video popped up for ADHD. And it was like intense ADHD focusing, like whatever music. And oh my gosh, 
I was like getting shit done, like seriously, so fast. It was crazy. It like ramped me up and at the same time helped me to focus. And I know I've shared a million times on this podcast, I have ADHD. Um, But, and then I started diving into his other stuff and forget it. Down a rabbit hole, so much goodness there. So I not only provide him as a link, but share multiple links to videos that I really love. Um, Number eight, I talk about, you know, what should probably be number one, which is having a daily gratitude practice. And I've talked about this multiple times on the podcast, so I won't dive into it, but um, I've gone through suicidal times in my life and incorporating a daily gratitude practice has literally saved my life twice. So that is included. It should be at the top of the list, I think. Um, You know, my father told me when I was young that when we stop being thankful, we fall away from God. And, you know, you could replace that with spirituality if God makes you feel fuzzy or weird. Um, It's just we fall away from ourselves. We get disconnected from the essence of who we are. And especially here in the Western world, or like we have so much to be thankful for, no matter what, you know. And a grateful list doesn't have to be comprised of profound things. Like I've literally been really thankful for toilet paper before, <laughs> you know, because I read about, you know, the, the, the uh, Jewish camps and like how they would like covet like a square, you know, to, to actually have something for toilet paper. Um, these are things that we forget about, right? So I share my practice. I also give some resources there. Journaling is another one. And I, I share a couple of different ways to get similar results to journaling. Like I share, I don't know how people stay sane without journaling. I just don't. It's, you know, when I go through periods, which I'm kind of in the midst of one right now where I'm not journaling consistently or a whole lot, but um, it's helped me through some of the best and worst times of my life. Just being able to like, it's, it's my favorite form of therapy. I love it because there's just near, no no judgment. And I always find a solution in the midst of writing. Like, I love that. It's like, I just, I get into a trance. I just start writing and then things start coming forward. Um, but I also offer solutions if you're not really into writing. Um, next one is anger releasing. And anger releasing is probably one of the practices that has offered me the most profound healing over the last couple of years. It's been huge. And I don't think it's called anger releasing any, I don't know that there's a specific name for it. It's just what I'm calling it. Um, I want to talk about anger so much more because, you know, anger gets this really bad rap. It's like, oh my gosh, don't be angry. Oh, you're crazy because you're angry. Like all of these things. But the deal is, is that anger is a beautiful emotion It can inspire us and motivate us. It can wake us up. And it lets us know when things are not right. Whether it's in our exterior world or our interior world. It is such an incredible teacher. But being able to release anger, I mean, man, it's just, there's massive healing through that. Not only in ourselves, but with like our inner children. I mean, I have to tell you, I just, I love Love, love anger releasing. So I talk about it. I share several resources, different ways to release anger because um, there's a number of ways. And what's most important is that, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. And so it's most important that you really think about what type of person you are and what works for you. Um, For some people, like writing angry letters works. (laughs) That does not work for me. I am so impatient. If I'm angry, like I'm kiss my ass. I'm not going to sit down and write a letter. (laughs) Heck no, not going to happen. Um, but, um, but there are other things that work for me. I'm a very physical person, so I need to release my anger physically. Um, so I share a number of those things. Um, number 11 is prayer. Prayer is so huge. You know, it's like, we might think that's an obvious one, but do we really? Like, is that actually something we think about and use? Do we talk to the universe? Do we ask for what we want? Do we spend time with that devotion? Do we show up? Um, 
And I share multiple ways in which to pray. I share how I pray. Um, I share about like the importance of prayer and why. And just kind of some some tips for praying, you know, and really praying is just 100% about being vulnerable and opening up your heart. That's it. That's really it. It's not complicated. You don't need a ritual. Um, being open and honest and, and cussing if you need to, whatever the case may be, being real is the number one way to start feeling better. Uh, silence, number 12, this is a non-negotiable in my life. And I think especially like the older I get, the more I love silence, the more I appreciate it, the more I seek it out. Uh, one of the places where I love to go for my personal vacation, it's a monastery. And I mean, it's amazing. I pull in to this place and within 30 minutes of being there, I'm asleep because it's so quiet. Like you're not really supposed to speak loudly outside of your room um, it's just like you're out in the middle of nature, like nobody's around. You don't ever hear vehicles unless like someone's coming or going, which is very rare. Like it's just, oh, it is so healing. And we run from silence. We don't want to be in silence. We'll listen to music. We'll listen to podcasts. We'll talk to people. We'll like whatever, you know, because huge things come through silence. Major healing comes through silence. Um, so again, I offer resources, practices, whatever. And then I go through the things that should be on everyone's spiritual toolkit list. So there's a list of different things that you want to have. Um, number one is humor, like anything that makes you laugh, so important. Um, number two, things that help you reconnect with your inner kid. And this is different from humor, even though like something that might make you laugh could be on this list. This is really about reconnecting with that like innocent curiosity that is so beautiful about children. Um, number three, of course, peace, right? <laughs> what brings you peace? Number four is grounding. We are not powerful unless we're grounded. We can't feel safe and secure unless we're grounded. And grounding and being grounded is probably one of the most underrated like states of being out there. You can be going through like a hellacious time, but if you are grounded, you're going to kind of you're going to kind of coast through it. You're going to you're going to feel strong and able even if things are completely falling around, falling down around you. Um and then five fun cuz of course, if you're not having fun, it's time to go home. Time to go home. We take things so seriously, you know, we take this life so seriously. We're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if this happens and blah, blah, blah. And like, what, what if this person passes away and what if this relationship falls apart and, and, and not to demean any of that by any means, like I'm not trying to minimize, but like everything happens for our benefit, everything. There's a reason and a purpose for every single thing. And when we're having fun, we're not so focused on the details, right? And we're not taking things so seriously. Like spirituality is amazing, but if you take it too seriously, then it becomes dogma, then it becomes a religion. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a religion. I'm not about that. <laughs> I if And if I have a religion, it's fun. It needs to be fun because that's where we get in touch with that inner child. That's where we connect with the core of ourselves when we're letting loose, not when we're trying, trying, trying. So these are just some of the highlights. And I encourage you in the midst of, you know, when you go through this list, A, please share it with anyone who could benefit from reading it, right? And if you see something that should be included that isn't, please share it with me. Or if you have some great resources, please share them with me. I love checking things out. And I think I already mentioned, I have already created, or started creating the next uh, list. Because um, of course I put this out and I was like, oh, wait a minute, what about this and this and this? So send it on. I'm happy to share. And I will definitely give you credit for it, you know? Um, so yeah, having a spiritual toolkit just to kind of bring this all back you know, it takes, it's going to take you some time, but you're worth it. Remember the quote for this podcast, when you invest in yourself, the world 
benefits. You taking the time to sit down, writing out a list of some of these things, you know, and you can put like two or three. It does not, these things do not need to go over, like don't go overboard, right? And then just like maybe grabbing like one or two of the tools and incorporating them into your daily practice, like trying something out, seeing how it fits and feels for you. My resources may not work for you. You might find, but in the midst of it, you might find something that does, you know? It's all about inspiration and it's all about just helping you to have some practical know-how in regards to what should go in your toolkit, what is going to benefit you. So, because the world needs you. The world needs you, needs what you have, needs your gift, needs your love, needs you making an impact. And we can't do that unless we are living a life that is connected to who we are in the core. You're going to have bad days. We all have bad days. I have terrible days sometimes too. So it's not all about light and love (laughs) 24-7. I'm about being real. But I'm also about having fun. I'm also about enjoying the ride. And these tools are going to help you do that. So... Thank you so much for sticking with me if you've lasted this long. I really appreciate it. I so hope that you find this resource to be of value in your life. I would love to know how it resonates with you once you look over it. Again, please send any suggestions. I am open, open, open. And happy, happy Thanksgiving. Please, even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, like do something to celebrate thankfulness right? Sit down, make a list of the things that you're thankful for. Really just put in the effort because, you know, it's kind of like New Year's. Even if you don't want to celebrate New Year's, there's all this energy that comes together that's really like amplifying new beginnings. And same thing for Thanksgiving. Even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, celebrate being thankful because there's nothing that's more beautiful. Big love. If this episode inspired you if you found it valuable please leave us a review or just a rating ratings good on itunes it's very helpful for getting this podcast out to more people make sure you sign up for the email list so that you get resources like this first and foremost and don't forget when we invest in ourselves the world benefits until next week